normally in um, October, I watch nothing but um, horror films. So usually for by the 1st of October, I've seen a horror film. However, this year I'm doing a mixture of horror films, obviously all directed by women, um, but also TCM is having their Trailblazing Women series, and it started today. Um, and what they're doing is they're going through the history, sort of a comparative history of, of um, women film filmmakers. So I say comparative because it doesn't, it's not linear. Um, it's sort of linear, but then they also go through genres and, and um, or not genres, but like um, different countries and, and um, ethnicities. So it's, it's interesting, and I'm, I'm really excited. They're doing it every Tuesday and Thursday, so I'm going to be watching a bunch of films. Um, quite a few of the films that they're showing, especially into the 80s uh, and beyond, are films I've already seen, but I'm trying to watch everything that they're, that they're showing that I haven't seen. So um, I missed, they showed a bunch of Alice Guy Blachet short shorts, um, and I missed them because I had to work, ha, <laughs> because I have a job. So um, I was unable to watch those, but they are all on YouTube, so I'm going to try to catch up on those um, this weekend. But I got to watch everything else that they showed, which was a whole bunch of films. I watched four movies. It's October, and I've seen four movies already. <laughs> and it's only the first. So I watched, uh, the first one I got to see was The Ocean Waif, which is a 40-minute long, or four-reeler four by Alice Guy Blachet, and it was one of um, many films in the era that were these waif films of like sort of young helpless women trapped in terrible uh, circumstances. In this case, she's a woman who washed ashore as a child and then is like being forced into labor, uh, hard labor at this inn that she, she by the man who found her, and then uh, years later she grows up, she's a teenager. And a famous novelist stays there. He falls for her. But then the guy that raised her now wants to marry her, which is creepy and gross, but also probably something that happened more often than we will ever know because that kind of shit's never written into history. It's just forgotten because it happened to women, and, you know, we forget women. Um, so it's a great film. I like Alice Guy Boucher a lot. She made thousands, at least a thousand films, probably thousands of films, most of which are lost probably destroyed. It's it's depressing, and she should be remembered as one of the very earliest pioneers of film. Um, and a lot of the ones that are existent are, like I said, on uh, YouTube, and you should watch them. There's also a documentary about her called Be Natural that's coming out in a few, hopefully next year. I donated to the Kickstarter a, a year ago, uh, and I can't wait for it to come out. And everyone will remember this amazing pioneer. Uh, the next film they showed was by Lois Weber, and it was called The Blot. Lois Weber is great. I saw her film Shoes, a restoration of it, at the San Francisco Silent Film Festival, where I got my trademark necklace a few, few years back. Um, Weber really believed that film was a medium in which she could affect change, and so she made films about social issues that she believed in and ideas that she wanted to to pass on to people in order to make the world a better place. She also made entertaining films. She coupled those things. It's amazing. Um, so in the plot, she's sort of talking about how we underpay our teachers and uh, the fact that we need to establish a, a living wage, which is something that's still a problem, and that movie was from 1921, so, you know... We really learn a lot from history in this country uh, slash world. So um, that one was delightful, and it had Louis Calhoun, like a really young Louis Calhoun, as one of the men in it. Um, so it was kind of a delightful film to watch. That one's about 90 minutes. Then they showed The Love Light, which is not only written by the lovely Frances Marion, a.k.a. the most badass of badass screenwriters, um, it was also directed by her and starring Mary Pickford. They were besties. Um, and, and the romantic lead was also Frances Marion's husband at the time. Um, this was, film was made right after uh, 
or what was I going to try? Oh, so this film was also early 20s. Um, it has really great special effects. Or not early 20s. This was, when was this? Uh, hold on. Yeah, early 20s. 21. Okay. Um, it's set during the war, during World War One, the Great War. It's a, sort of a meditation on family and love and motherhood and marriage and war and all of these things that the, these two women had had been learning together as as young brides, as young women, as uh, people who worked in the war effort. Um, and it's all in there, and it's really wonderful. And uh, but there's this great antic anecdote that, that uh, Carrie Beauchamp said at the opening of the film where there's a part where there's like a climactic boat sinking and critics were saying that only a woman director would uh, use such a fake little boat. And it was a real boat. She filmed it with a real boat in a real storm. And her assistant director almost died to get the shot. And then critics dismiss it as a fake boat. It's like pretty much just as badass as when Buster Keaton actually blew up a train, you know. But like, you know, he's a dude. So clearly he really did it. And she's you know, a woman, so she must have faked it. Fucking assholes. Um, <laughs> that was a great film. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, and then lastly, uh, they showed a documentary based on Carrie Beauchamp's Francis Marion document or biography, which I have not read, and clearly I need to because I love Francis Marion, and she's written some of my favorite films. Um, it's called Without Lying Down, Francis Marion and the Powerful Women in Hollywood. Um, it's about an hour long, and it traces Francis, a little bit about Frances Marion's early days, how she came to Hollywood, uh, how she got in the movies because Marie Dressler was a friend and told her, just do it, man. And then she started as an actress, and then she starts writing, and then she write, meets Mary Pickford, and she, Mary Pickford's so powerful, and they became this great team, and then she went on and became the first, the first person, period, to win two Oscars for anything. Frances Marion for her writing. She's fucking badass. Um, and she, there's, they were talking about how she would like, as she became this powerful writer, she would write roles for her, her friends who were not getting cast anymore because of age or whatever, mostly because of age. Um, and she would write roles for them. And she's the reason that Mary Dressler got, became a star again in the thirties because she was a huge star in the, in the teens and she was a Broadway star before that. And then Marie Dressler was like, the reason MGM was not losing money during the Great Depression because everyone loved her, and that was because Frances Marion insisted on bringing her back into the movies. And it's that part kind of made me cry a little bit because it was so amazing to hear about women helping each other, women helping each other, helping each other, and helping each other again. And it's like that's what we need to do. And kind of, I love this this series because it's it's women helping women and it's women spotlighting women. And in doing this project I've been doing all year, I've, I've interacted with so many women who feel the same way. And it's like we felt voiceless and then we've all sort of come together and our voice is much louder than it used to be. And I feel like we really have a chance to make a big change. And I'm glad that this uh, TCM is doing this series to spotlight the history because if we take the history and use that as ammunition to move forward... I think we can really do something great for women who want to make films, for women who are making films, for little girls who will know that they can go out and make films. Um, so I'm looking forward to, you'll see very impassioned videos like this every Tuesday and Thursday for the rest of October as I watch far too many films on Turner Classic Movies. It's uh, called Trailblazing Women, and the hashtag is Trailblazing Women in Film. And you should go to their mini site and you should look at all the films and you should watch as many of these films as you possibly can. Steal the TV, steal the watch TCM thing, just do it. You'll get such an amazing education, I promise. Also, I may or may not be live tweeting Valley Girl in a few next Thursday. So, like, it's going to be like totally trivendicular, I promise.